So the City Custom Cash is a 5% cashback card that can get you around $300 back per year if you spend $500 per month in an eligible category. That's it, end of video, bye. Okay, so while this is a very simple credit card on face value, there's actually quite a bit to talk about. In this video, we're gonna cover what's actually covered in these 5% categories, how to get even more than 5% back with this card, and finally, who this card is good for and who it's maybe not so good for. So I think we can all agree that the goal with credit cards is to get the most value possible. And for cash back cards, the gold standard is right around that 5% mark, which is exactly what the City Custom Cash promises. With this card, you'll be getting 5% cash back on your top eligible spend category, up to $500 spent each billing cycle. And since this card has no annual fee, it's easy to come out in the green as long as you don't carry a balance. So now we're going to break down what the eligible spend categories actually are, which should help you decide whether or not you'll be able to get value from this card. So at a quick glance, we see the 5% eligible categories are restaurants, gas stations, grocery stores, select travel, select transit, select stream services, drug stores, home improvement stores, fitness clubs, and live entertainment. Now, if you go and use this card in multiple categories, this card is actually going to calculate your highest spend category for that billing cycle and give you 5% cash back for those purchases. As for your other purchases, those are all going to earn 1% cash back. This is nice because you don't have to manually switch the category. And I don't know about you, but I personally prefer when things are automated like this since it makes my life just a little bit simpler. But let's Let's dive into the eligible categories and see what's actually included. For the restaurant category, it's going to include cafes, bars, lounges, and fast food restaurants. What's not included are purchases at bakeries, caterers, and restaurants located inside another business. So if you're at a hotel restaurant, these are probably going to be excluded from this category. And things like this can be confusing because on face value, I think that if I'm at a restaurant, that's going to be restaurant spend. But now we know. And knowing is half the battle. Now, one of the categories that a lot of people use this card for is gas stations. However, City does have some exclusions in their fine print that we must be mindful of. Gasoline purchases at warehouse clubs, discount stores, convenience stores, or other merchants that do not use the gas station merchant category code will be excluded from the gas station category. Grocery stores is another big one. If you spend less than $500 per month on groceries, this is an excellent use for this card. And it includes purchases at supermarkets, markets, meat slash seafood stores, dairy stores, bakeries, and miscellaneous food slash convenience stores. Excluded are purchases at general merchandise slash discount superstores, think Kmart, Walmart, and Target, plus wholesale slash warehouse clubs, as well as candy, nut, and confectionery stores. Now, online grocery delivery services may or may not qualify. In order to qualify, they must classify themselves as a supermarket with the supermarket merchant category code. Fair enough. Select travel is up next, and this category includes airline, hotel, cruise line, and travel agency purchases. It does not include timeshares, boat leases and rentals, campgrounds and trailer parks, and real estate agencies. So if you find yourself walking into a Bass Pro Shop and then casually walking out with a full vacation planned, that vacation is likely not going to qualify for the 5% back. Now I've read that Airbnb does code as travel with this card, but I can't confirm this is 100% true. If you have experience with this, please let me know down below. And from what I've read, Verbo does not count toward this category. Now, Select Transit is a separate category from Select Travel and includes car rentals, ferries, commuter railways, subways, taxis slash limousines slash car services, passenger railways, bridge and road tolls, parking lots slash garages, bus lines, and motorhome and recreational vehicle rentals. Interestingly, it excludes bike slash scooter rentals, auto clubs, and insurance companies. So if you live in a city, I can potentially see this category being one of your top picks for this card. The next category is select streaming services, and it looks like it covers just about every streaming services you could possibly want. I'll throw them up on the screen. There's 21 of them listed here. I don't really see this category being a great use for this card since you're more likely to spend more money in other eligible categories, but I suppose if you have other cards that take 
take care of those categories, this could be a good option. Drugstores are up next, and this category includes purchases made at pharmacies, inside of grocery stores, general merchandise slash discount superstores, and wholesale slash warehouse clubs if those merchants submit the purchases with the drugstore and pharmacy merchant category code. And of course, this category will include purchases made at actual drugstores like your CVS, Walgreens, and Rite Aids. The home improvement stores category is going to include purchases at home supply warehouse stores, lumber and building material stores, paints and wallpaper stores, hardware stores, nurseries, lawn and garden supply stores, and paints, varnishes, and supply stores. It does not include florists and florist supply stores, nursery stock, wholesale construction stores, or glass stores. I can see this being a nice category if you're doing some light work around the house, but obviously the $500 monthly cap is going to present an issue since, as you may be aware, home renovations and repairs are very expensive. The fitness clubs category is one that's probably not a fantastic use of this card for most people, but it does include membership fees and other purchases at athletic, sports, and recreation facilities. Now, it's going to exclude virtual services, personal monitoring devices, and fitness streaming classes, so something like a Peloton subscription wouldn't get the 5% back with this card. The live entertainment category can potentially be a decent use for this card if you find yourself liking to be entertained frequently. So this is going to include concerts, live sporting events, live theatrical productions, amusement parks, and orchestras. However, since this category is called live entertainment and not just entertainment, it excludes charitable organizations that provide live entertainment, sporting camps, sports complexes where you participate in the sport, public and private golf courses, country clubs, bowling alleys, movie theaters, horse attractions, museums, and art galleries. If you're considering using this card for the live entertainment category, but find this category to be too restricting, definitely check out the Capital One Saver one. While it's only going to earn 3% in its entertainment category, it includes more things, such as tourist attractions, bowling alleys, and a few other things. So if you want to check out my city custom cash link below, it actually includes a calculator where you can plug in your expected spend and it's going to pop out how much cash back you can expect to get from this card. For instance, let's say we go in and plug in that we're going to max out the gas category at $500 per month. We can see that's going to get us $300 per year in cash back. Easy peasy. As I mentioned a little earlier, the cash back for this card is given to you in the form of city thank you points, which can be used for a handful of different things. First and foremost, you can cash them out for a statement credit, direct deposit, or a check. Or you can use them to purchase gift cards or to book travel through the Thank You Reward Center or even use them to shop with points at partner brands. I'd personally stick with the cashback options, but that's just my personal preference. Plus, the nice thing about redeeming for a statement credit or direct deposit is there's no minimum required to redeem. However, if you want to get even more value from your Thank You points, there's one way we can turn this city custom cash from a 5% cashback card into a 5.5% cashback card. But in order to squeeze this extra value out of these points, you've got to be willing to open up another credit card. And that credit card is the City Rewards Plus. The thing is, you can actually transfer your thank you points over to this card where you will get 10% points back when you redeem your points. And they allow you to do this up to the first 100,000 points per year. The good thing is the City Rewards Plus card is also a no annual fee card, but the not so good thing is the card has an underwhelming earning structure. Another nice thing about the City Custom Cash is it generally has has a decent welcome offer available. Check my link down below to see the current welcome offer, but as I'm recording this video, they're offering $200 in cash back after spending $1,500 on purchases in the first six months of account opening. That means if you're using this card only for that 5% cash back, you'll be getting around 18% in effective cash back on that first $1,500 to spend once you tack on this welcome offer. That's pretty solid. But in order to qualify for this offer, you must not have received a bonus offer for opening a new city custom cash card in the past 48 months. Now, the City Custom Cash isn't a card that's full of additional benefits, but you will get protections like ID theft protection, zero dollar liability for unauthorized charges, and City Quick Lock. Plus, you'll have access to your FICO score, which is always helpful to keep an eye on. And an interesting little note about the FICO score that City provides, you may notice that it goes all the way up to 900, which is like, what? I thought this thing only went up to 850. What gives? But this is because they're actually showing you your FICO bank card score 8. And this particular score is more relevant to credit card applications as opposed to other types of loans. So who do I think this card's good for? Well, I think if you need a credit card for one individual spend category and that's all you're going to use this card for, 
then this is an excellent fit. This allows you to really maximize that 5% back. But if you're someone who doesn't want multiple cards in their wallet and prefers a single catch-all card, you may want to take a look at a 2% flat rate catch-all card or even a card like the Autograph or the Saver 1 that provides 3% cash back in multiple categories. Now, I don't currently have this card, not because I don't think it's worth it. I'd pick this card up in a heartbeat. But if you're like me and you're concerned about your 524 status with Chase, that makes it so you have to be very selective in which cards you decide to apply for. So if you are interested in picking up Chase cards, you may want to get those out of the way first, but otherwise, I think this is a phenomenal card. At the end of the day, it's really hard to beat 5% cash back. And if you want to check out the cards I'm currently slapping around on a daily basis, check out this video. Thanks for watching. Peace.